I'm JJ and today we're going to be talking about how to use the new Looker Studio buttons, um, how to apply them to advanced filters, and overall how to make them really, really useful. So that's what we're going to talk about and I'm going to show you two examples, possibly two and a half, uh, that are super, super useful for you to apply into your everyday life. So let's just show how we can do that. But first of all, if you have not downloaded the Looker Studio cheat sheet, go do that over on lookerstudio.vip forward slash YouTube. It is super, super sweet. We uh, You also join a newsletter that has, um, I write every single Thursday, lots of great things, cheat sheet, newsletter, what can go wrong. So let's hop into it, folks. So here is a report that we have. You can see how it is. Um, basically everything that you'd ever wanted and more. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to do this. So let me just break this down really quickly. So here we have sessions over time. Let's just look at the last uh, 14 days just to make things a little bit bigger here. We then have the number of leads generated up here. We have landing page and we have session source, okay? So what if we just wanted to highlight a specific domain? So if you see behind me here, there's a lot of different domains here. What we can do is we can click on this button. I'm gonna go into view mode and we are gonna click on this. Pa-pow. And ta-da, you can see here, we have only the Looker Studio domains. All right, so how do we do that, folks? Well, let's hop into it. So we go back into edit mode and this is where we are using a button. So um, what this is, is it is a control right here. So let's just drag on another button here and we will add in here, button. And now we've got a button. By default, it'll be navigation, but we don't want navigation. Navigation's pretty boring and lame, honestly. You can just link to other reports, hyperlinks, right? But you also have the report actions and filters. So filters are a glorified checkbox, okay? So if you have not did not know, um, you can add a, another type of control up here that is a checkbox, right? So both the checkbox and the new button, let me get this stuff out of the way up here, both the checks checkbox and the button uh, are booleans. So if you don't know what a boolean is, don't worry. I didn't know a few years ago either. Um, a boolean is basically a true or false value, meaning uh, you only can have two options as the output. And if you don't have a boolean in your data set, it will show up here as uh, an error. So let's create a boolean, right? So what we need to do is we can hit create new. Because we don't have a boolean, there'll be nothing to do here. So let's make ourselves a Boolean. I want to see when the host name, right, equals double quotes, looker studio.vip. I'm going to hit apply and ta-da, we now have a button. So I'm going to delete this old one. And I want to say, let's just highlight, let's call this, sorry, that's not the right thing. Let's call this button, highlight looker LSVIP. So if you did not know, that's a site there. And so now this is, let's get rid of this checkbox. We don't care about that no more. That's old news yesterday. So now if I click this button, it will then say if the, basically if the host name contains Looker Studio VIP, that is now true. So there we go. It is selected. We can deselect it and select it. Select it, deselect it, select it, deselect it. Pow, pretty sweet, right? So now we can see how these might compare to other things. There, so that could be pretty cool. Another option is, is if you have a lot of interactions, right? So say for example, we wanna select this source over here, that is an interaction, we might have to like reset, right? That can be confusing to a an end user of a Looker Studio report. But what we can do with our newfound buttons, right? That's what we wanna look at here. We can actually reset things. So if you go up here to report interactions, you can actually decide what you wanna do. Get report link, download report, or reset filters. So now we can hey, put in, what we wanna put in is a little emoji. Let's put in a back arrow, that's always fun, right? And then we can hit reset report, all right? Let's make this a different color because frankly, that's gonna be real confusing. Let's go with this blue and ta-da. So now you can be in here, you can look clickety clack and you like highlight this landing page. Oh, we got zero leads, but here's our sessions. Maybe we wanna go back to the last, I don't know, let's go look at today. 
Let's see what's happening. Pow, zero leads today. Not looking too hot for this landing page. But you're in here slicing and dicing your data and you forget what happened. Come up here, reset report. We are back in the default, right? So here we go. It is now reset. It does not reset the date range though. So here, that's the thing you have to remember is that if you were looking at a specific like date range, it won't reset that. Pretty odd in my, like, I don't know. It seems pretty odd as far as like my case scenario, but this reset will reset everything else. So here, reset, bam, back to normal. Pa pow back to normal, but then it won't reset the date. So I don't know why that is. Maybe I'm doing something wrong if someone knows anything that I don't know. If you're like, hey, you're pushing the wrong button here, but if we look at last 30 days and then we go to reset, it does not reset the date. So I don't know why that is, but everything else does reset for you. So let's hop back into edit and let's go into more things. So here we have a highlighting of a um, particular host name. Maybe you wanted to highlight organic, right? So maybe you could just say, hey, we have an organic traffic. So let's just make another one of these buttons right here. Pa -pow. Actually, let me show you another reason. So we have Looker Studio VIP. We have another host name called Better Than Data. Let's make another filter here. So here we have uh, better than data.com, right? Option over, get rid of those suckers, pa -pow. You can see here it's a Boolean. We are off to the races. And so now if you, go into view mode, we can have this, which is gonna highlight uh, better than data. And we have this that is gonna highlight Looker Studio VIP. The problem is, is what if both of these are selected, right? We've got no data because you can't have both of these being true. So how do we combat that? How do we fix that? Because if an end user is looking at this, you are SOL. Okay, so let's first of all, change the highlight to be for highlight BTD. And then what you will see here is you will see down here a little group, right? So you can see oh, when I hover over this, it will say um, buttons in the same category, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? We don't know about that. So let's put these in a group together of group one. So every button in a group can only be applied one at a time. So these are both in group one. Now, when one is depressed, when one is depressed, right? Um, it's feeling pretty bad on, down on itself. The other will be unpressed. What's the opposite of depressed? Propressed. Um, and then see, so now we can see this one is now selected. That one is not selected. Pa -pang, bam, bam. So now we can uh, have things that are not are mutually exclusive. We can have one and then the other with these buttons. So highlight lookers through VP, highlight better than data. Pa -pow, pa -pow. You are off to the races. Okay, so now let's talk about when we wanna get more spicy, right? Say you have a complex um, kind of question. You wanna know this particular landing page and organic traffic, how are we trending over time with our sessions and our leads, right? That's our question. So let's do that. So here you can see we have um, lookerstudio.vip forward slash new metrics and we have organic traffic, right? So Google. Let's highlight, say we want, say we, that was a particular high volume page that we just always are asking questions of. Let's make a button that answers that question of two different criteria. So let's add it here. So out of control, let's add a little button. Here we go. There's our new button. Um, we are going to then make it a filter. Let's make this just so we have stylistically, let's make it like orange here. Ba -bow. And now we get to do something more fancy. So we have to have two criteria. Um, pause the video if you wanna test yourself and see how you can figure out how to do it. But what we're gonna do is you do a case statement. And you can also use an if statement, but in my mind, case always seems to work better. So case when, when a landing page, right, equals Oh geez, looker studio dot VIP forward slash new dash metric forward slash. Don't forget the double quotes that will bite you in the butt if you do forget them. So here I am. If you do not know, you can use option and your little checker thingy. There we go. So if that is equals that and right session first source as our first source here equals Google, pow, then true, all right? So if that equals that, else equals false, 
and end. So this should turn to a little green checkbox. Hopefully it does. Did I miss something? Oh, we don't need an equals. That's the problem there. So else is false. Ta-da, ta-da. Hit apply and see if it works, right? So this sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. The reason this sometimes works, I don't know, unfully, is because it doesn't want to be a Boolean. So I think what has to happen is we just have to get rid of our else statement here. And then hit apply. All right, for some reason, we are SOL. When this is this, ba -da -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, it equals true. Otherwise, it is false, and that should be there. So hold on one second while I debug this. And with the magic of editing, we are back in business. So here we go. For some reason, this is not working. I just checked a client account, and it is working uh, as a intended here. So what you can do, right? We don't have to actually, because we're only using one statement, I was gonna go show you some fancier things, but what we can do here is just get rid of uh, everything else. So these two criteria have to be equaled um, in order for this to work. So landing page is this, and this is this. And for some reason, we are just, oh, let's get rid of these out here. So we need both of these to be true and that should work just fine. So I'm um, not sure why, again, Looker Studio Studios is a little bit complicated here, but when landing page equals this, and then you can just add an and, and what we can do is put that on a separate line to make things easier to read. So you can always make sure you can keep things uh, like noted in the past, <laughs> like of this is this. So here we have both the Looker Studio VIP forward slash new metrics, and it has to be the source of Google. Hit apply on that. Now we've got a Boolean, okay? So theoretically, right, what should happen is when I click this button, which we wanna give it a good name of, let's just call it our core business, core biz pages, right? and organic, right? So that's what's gonna happen. So let's see if it works. If we click any clack on this, let's get rid of this over here. Let's go full screen. It should highlight there, ta-da. So here we go. So here you can see we push this button and now we have landing page is this and Google organic is already selected. So we were able to highlight multiple different things using an and. Normally it's a case, but you know, hey, we're not for some reason not working here. Um, and you are able to apply multiple different pieces at the same exact time. So now you can see how you can use these in tan, like in hopefully like a tangent in relation to this of applying a, a lot of these different filters. So let's just say we wanted to highlight Looker Studio VIP and use this piece, right? Because Looker Studio VIP is on this, it will work. If I click on this one, it will unselect this, but it will not unselect this because they're not in the same group, right? So just keep that in mind is if you have all of these kind of combinations, you're trying to have selections and pieces here, um, you then have to figure out how you wanna slice that up and make it really intuitive for the end user to use because when they come up here to reset, ta-da, now we reset all of our buttons. Um, so now let's do one last thing I just wanna show you here because it's really cool is since we've got our date range, we've got our highlight here. Um, what we are also able to do is if you want to group things together, you can also do that. So say for example, you did not have these charts down here. I'm gonna leave them here just for the sake of leaving them here, but say you didn't. When I click this button, right, you can see, oh, we have to be in view mode. Click this button, you can see we've got three uh, leads, we've got all these sessions over time, and we've got this down here of now it's only showing Google and only showing landing pages. So if you wanted to, right, what you can do is you can actually group these together. So select all of these, hit Command G. Now we are groupity grouped, and you can hit View. And now when I select this, it only applies to these up here. Why is it different? Not 100% sure. I think I'm gonna use a different data source, so that's probably a personal problem. But there we go. So like now you can group these things together. Let's just say we have this, bam, there we go, our one lead. I think we were on the last 14 days. That's why we had uh, more than one lead, or maybe it was more than that. But you are able to easily like kind of group things. So now this right, our core business is highlighted. There we go, there's our three leads. Um, highlighting specifically the 
leads generated, the sessions generated, but it's not affecting everything else. And then because these are not grouped, you could then layer in a different uh, kind of metric if you wanted to um, something else. But because we have those, we're not gonna do that. So now you have a way to highlight a specific business, highlight a specific um, type of data, and now you can layer in multiple pieces together and always be able to reset and give your end user the most interactable dashboard on planet Earth. So um, good luck. I will link this down below. Go hog wild and send and trying it out. And we will see who can make the best buttons for all of future buttonry. All right. See you guys in the next video.